Hey guys, welcome to another video from EarnPed.com. I'm Stevie B. Happy to have you all with us today. I literally just stopped shooting the video about the new limited faps that you can get here on Next Island. Um, I'm still hunting Chimera. I've got 2,000 that I've got to hunt to get my hands on the blueprint. So going to be hunting for a few minutes. And I wanted to take a minute to tell you guys about something that has really helped Next Island. It's really helped Ancient Greece. It's part of the reason that you're seeing the Ancient Greece shares start to pay out so regularly. And it's something that Next Island has really taken to heart. And the development team has done a great job with. And something that they should have done long ago. But I want to give them praise where praise is due. So let's back up. And let's talk about something that happened well over a year ago. Um, well over a year ago, I was in Ancient Greece. And I, I believe I was hunting the Cyclops uh, right around Thebes. Uh, right around, uh, not the Thebes teleporter, the one just north of that. And I think we might have been in a group chat. It might have been a private chat. I don't really remember. But I was talking to one of the dev members from Next Island. I think it might have even been Socrates. And I told him, I said, bro, if you want to make Ancient Greece work, if you want to make Next Island work, you have to fix the problem with the freaking loot pool on Next Island. We have this problem where the loot pool drops all these crystals and they have no markup, no demand. I mean, your inventory would just be filled with Angolite crystal and Zincite crystal and Agate crystal and Chimera heart and Sodalite crystal and Fencite crystal and Chimera hide and you know, Chlorite crystal. And, and none of this crap had any uses. None of it had any markup it didn't have any demand because there was nothing to use it with there were no blueprints to use it with and even if you could find a blueprint or reason to use it the thing that you made with the blueprint was even more useless than the thing you originally had so for the longest time on next island you if you came and you hunted you were just going to lose money because there was no loot you were going to be able to get that was going to have demand have markup and be able to be sold and put you in that profit zone that the ubers like to get in so if there was no chance of that happening, why would you ever come to Next Island? Why would you ever go to Ancient Greece? And I tried to scream from the hilltops that this was the case. And at the time, the developer that I was talking to, I don't remember who it was. It might have been Socrates, but I don't think it was. I think it was somebody else. Tried to tell me, well, making money isn't the only reason people play Entropia. They play for the social aspect. They play for the events. They play for the camaraderie. They play just because they like the sci-fi MMO. And I tried to tell him what a stupid thing that was to say. This is not a great game. If I want to play a great game, I'll go get a PS5 and I'll go buy a great game. Okay? I just will. But it's not about it being a great game. It's about the real cash economy. It's about this was one of the first, if not the first, online MMORPGs with a real cash economy. And it's one of the only games like it that has ever stood the test of time. There's Entropia Universe and then there's everything else. And I love when people are screaming about the metaverse now in 2022. It's like the new uh, catchphrase, it's new, the new buzzword is metaverse. And it's like, bro, we've had the metaverse for almost 20 years now. You're 19 years late to the party. We'll be celebrating the 20th anniversary of Entropia next year in 2023. So everybody's two decades behind the curve here. Entropia is the game that started it all, that is through the test of time in my book. There's a reason it set the world record time and again for most expensive virtual everything ever sold, pretty much. There's a reason I play this and not World of Warcraft or something else, okay? I would never just sit down and play an MMO to play an MMO. The one exception is if my girl was like, hey, will you play like a Final Fantasy MMO with me online? Sure, yeah, I'd do something like that. But again, I'm not doing it for the game. I'd be doing it to play with her, right? Big difference. So thing about it is, I tried to scream from the hilltop, if you really want to make Ancient Greece take off, if you really want to make Next Island take off, you're going to have to do something where it makes it profitable, at least for the Ubers, preferably for all players, preferably for players no matter their skill level. And they wanted to argue this point with me. Well, what had they made right before that? The Gorgon Wave. And what did the Gorgon Wave do? It allowed Uber players to go in and have a chance to loot armor, and upgrade stuff and uh, serpent scales and upgradable materials for serpent scales. And guess what? All that stuff had demand. All that stuff had markup. So that is what they based the ancient Greek shares off at the very beginning was exactly what I had told them they needed to do. Nobody went to hunt the Gorgon stuff to get random crystals that were useless and had no markup. The reason they were farming the Gorgon wave 
day after day, hour after hour, was because they had a chance at that loot that had markup that could make them profitable at the Gorgon armor, the upgrades to the Gorgon armor, the Serpent Skills, the upgrades to the Serpent Skills. And it worked for them, just like I said it would. So, guess what they did? They made a new instance a couple months ago, and I think I might have mentioned this in another video, but I want you guys to really know why the Ancient Greek shares seem to be paying out so well. Um, they made a new instance a couple months ago in Ancient Greece called the Moloch instance. I might be pronouncing that wrong. Many of you have seen the new Titan armor that's going around. It has incredible stats, incredible, in every sense of the word, protections. And it's extremely rare. It's unlimited. And if you ever see it on auction, people are asking a literal fortune per piece. I think a while back I saw people asking $1,500, 15,000 ped for one piece of armor. And remember, it takes seven pieces to make a set. So how do you get the, the armor? Well, you have to go into the Moloch instance. But here's the great thing about it. The Moloch instance doesn't just drop the Titan armor. It drops a ton of loot that has demand, that has markup. We're talking tiering components. We're talking all kinds of stuff that has good, good, good demand and exceptionally good markup. Stuff that Ubers are able to farm all day and all night. And if they've managed to get to the level where they can do that instance, where they can take down those creatures, then they should have the weapons, the gear, the game knowledge to make that instance work for them to where they are more or less able to run that instance at a very, very small loss, possibly at a pretty decent profit without the Titan armor at all. So if they're able to run that instance and they're going to see right there, Moloch Master, 132 ped, one crappy player. One crappy player has been in there literally all morning since I've been on hunting Molochs because he's looking for that Titan armor. So without the Titan armor, take the Titan armor out of it. If the instance has good enough loot where Ubers can go in and make a profit just hunting without the Titan armor, they're going to stay in there and they're going to farm all day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Because that means they're making a profit just off hunting, even if they don't get that Titan armor. And if they can do that, then if they do get Titan armor, then th they're just cashing out money hand over fist. Because that Titan armor is exceptionally rare. It's exceptionally valuable, and it's got exceptionally good protections. And guess what? Not just anybody can do this instance. I do think maybe we should make an instance for lower-level players that give them a pretty good chance to, to make money off the game through getting some decent loot. But really, right there, Moloch Master again, 239 ped. Um, really, I, I think I've kind of changed my views on this over the years. If you're willing to put in the time it takes to get the skills, the defense skills, the combat skills, to be at the highest level of the game, you deserve to be able to profit from the game. Um, to make an instance aimed at low-level players going in and trying to get good loot would not be exceptionally smart, nor would it be exceptionally profitable for the developers or for the planet partner or for Mindark or for the player. Because most players, even if you made something like that for low-level players, they're not going to have the game knowledge or the gear. The thing about aiming these type of instances toward higher level players, they don't just have the skills. They've got the game knowledge and the gear too, which is all part of the equation. So even if the Moloch instance has to be ran at a little bit of a loss, even if the players are going in there and by the time they account for the markup and the demand and everything, they're still losing a little bit of ped, they're going to run it a lot because they're, they're taking a very, very small loss to take a chance at a huge profit should they get that Titan armor. Now, I haven't personally been in there. I haven't personally been able to run the instance, so I don't have any numbers as far as how much can you make or lose just running the instance itself. I don't have that. I'm assuming there is probably a pretty good chance that even with demand and markup on the stuff that's in there, most people are going to be at a pretty small loss by running it. However, players with the right gear, the right game knowledge, the right equipment, the right levels, all that, are probably going to be running at break-even to maybe even a little bit of a profit, even without the Titan armor. Right there, Moloch Master again, 195 ped. Um, so if they're running at break-even or a small profit, then yes, they're going to farm it all day to stay at break-even or a small profit to keep trying to get... Sorry, I got distracted by something Cali trade. By trying to get that, that Titan armor. So I think this is a great thing. It's headed in the right direction. It shows that Next Island and the development team are finally in tune 
with the players and what the players want and how to get the players' attention, how to get the players to come here and grind. It is the epitome of the perfect instance, the perfect way to set everything up to get players to come and to get players to spend money and to just cycle, cycle, cycle endlessly. Now, unfortunately, because of how high level you have to be and how much DPS you need to be able to put out in order to go in and do that instance and do it effectively, pretty much everybody watching this isn't going to be able to take advantage of that. Um, it's an instance where I believe the, there again, Malik Master, 636 ped, one crappy player. So you see, one crappy player is, is cycling a ton of ped at the moment. Now, just because he's hitting all these globals doesn't mean he's making money. It's just taking variance out of his run. But notice he is cycling, 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 cycling. He wants that Titan armor. So the thing about it is, oh, here's the Titan harness right here. Um, want to sell Titan harness mail. Tier 2.36, 13,000 ped, $1,300 just for the harness. But look at this harness, guys. Um, cold, 30. Electric, 30. Impact, 60. Stab, 60. Those are some great, great protections because it's very minimal protections. It, there's not like 15 different protection types listed here, but they're very high protections, 30 and 60. That's amazing. So now I can take this harness and I can go, okay, what other protections do I need for what I'm specifically hunting today? And I can just add AP60 plates or AP66 plates. It's not like something like what I'm wearing where it's got 900 protections on it. And I might be hunting something that doesn't have any of these. Acid. Chimera don't do acid. Burn. They don't do burn. Cold. I don't think they do. Cold. Cut. Impact. Stab. Okay, I don't need 900 protections. You think this is bad? Look at Mayhem Armor. Mayhem Armor. Acid. Burn. Cold. Cut. Electric. Impact. Pin. Shrapnel. Stab. Okay, you don't need all that. Um, that that's not good because when you're using armor... It decays the same whether you're using that specific protection or not. So from that aspect, this Titan Harness is amazing because it gives you amazing protection on only four different types of attack, and then you can just add plates to increase the protection. Also, increase evade chance, 15%. Decrease critical damage, 20 percentage points. That is amazing, especially at very, very high levels. So obviously very 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 valuable also very 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 rare and very 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 hard to get and like i said you would have to be exceptionally high level with exceptionally good armor to even go in and do that instance i think there's three mobs in that instance all mollocks i think the small one is like three or four thousand hp and the big one's like twelve thousand hp so you need a lot of protection a lot of defense a lot of good armor a lot of dps and you're also going to want to have high efficiency, high damage per pack. I know, let's not start that argument again. Um, I'm just saying that because, again, damage per pack is part of efficiency. So let's calculate it in with it. Weapons, which are going to be uber weapons, right? So for the players at the highest levels of the game, it, it's an amazing chance to get absolutely amazing armor. Now, it's a very, very small chance. Uh, you're not going to get it every hour. You're not going to get it every day. You might hunt for months at a time and not get a single piece. But think about that, 13,000 ped for just the harness, 15,000 ped for just the helmet. That's $1,300 per piece of armor. That is insane money. Um, so obviously, if you're making that kind of money, that is awesome. That is great. And that's why I think they finally hit it on the nose because it's not just great protections on the armor. It's not just great buffs on the armor. It's not just great that you can add the right plates to the armor to be specific with what you're hunting, um, but it's got an exceedingly, exceedingly rare drop rate in an instance where you're going to farm over and over, but in an instance where the loot that you're farming has markup and demand that allows you to be either at a small profit, break even, or possibly at a small loss if you are properly equipped, if you have proper game knowledge, if you have proper skills. So I think they are finally in tune with the player base. I think they learned a lot from the Gorgon Wave and uh, that instance. And I think Next Island is really, really, really on the right track here as far as fixing the loot pool in general. Now, in general, is it that good? No, it's not that good in general, unfortunately. Um, the low-level players are not going to have that good of a time with it. But they also haven't put in that much time and effort into getting the skills, the game knowledge, and the armor and the weapons and the gear, right? However, it's even better for low-level players. I used to TT every bit of loot I got on Next Island. 
if I was on Next Island or Ancient Greece, I used to throw it all in the trade terminal, CT it, and head back to Cali because it was all useless. That is no longer the case. There are now many of these random crystals that have markup. There's many of these random crystals that now have demand. Some of these dailies that used to produce something with even less markup and less usefulness and less demand than the, than the inputs, now some of those end items have demand, have markup, have value. Lesser Elysian is the prime example of how they did it right. I remember TTing almost 2,000 pet of Lesser Elysian one time. Uh, I just had a lot of sweat laying around, a lot of Listerium, and I made it on Cali, and it was useless, no demand, no markup, and I just TT'd it because there was no point in keeping it, and I was like, eh, okay, well, I had fun. Now, on to the next one. Now, Lesser Elysian has been used in so many things. It's used in so many blueprints and has so many uses. 6,000 pet has been sold on auction this month alone at 120% markup. That is extremely, extremely impressive. So they're doing a lot of things in the right direction. They're going back when they're making these new missions, these new instances, when they're fixing new items, new blueprints. What they're doing is they're not just adjusting the loot pool to where now there's things that are profitable, that have demand and have markup. Not only are they adding instances for high-level Ubers with a very, 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 very slim one in a billion lotto chance at something worth a ton of money, they're also going back and saying, what do we have that has no, no value, no demand, no markup? How can we develop this new item we're developing in a way that changes that? Well, what they did with these new FAPs is a prime example. They made these new FAPs, which I've told you guys about in another video. The FAPs are awesome. They're limited FAPs. You've got to go through these mission chains and kill thousands of creatures just to get the blueprint. It's a limited blueprint with only a few clicks. However, they're FAPs that are good for hunting healers for hire competitions all the way around just great faps right and then what are they doing to make those faps now you need some of those inputs that previously had no demand had no markup there was no use making them there was no use doing that daily now those are the inputs needed to make the faps so they're doing a great job retroactively taking care of the fact that they're now able to make demand and markup where there was none before they're doing a great job of making sure that that loot pool issue is fixed without even having to take all that junk out of the loot pool. They're able to leave most of it in the loot pool and still take care of this, which is even more impressive to me. So great, great job. Want to give them credit where credit is due. The Moloch instance, I think, tells me that they are super, super, super in tune with players at the highest level, and that is starting to trickle down to what they're doing at the lower levels of the game. So again, I want to give them credit where credit is due. To get into the Moloch instance, you have to do a mission chain. You can find it on nihelper.com. That's nihelper.com. nihelper.com has a lot of great information. Um, in fact, let me see if I can pull it up for you guys real quick. And I'll just read off what all you got to do. Because again, not everybody is going to be able to do this. Um, it's not something that your average player is going to be able to do. But... For those of you who can, uh, you're probably already there, but let's just run through it. Um, you would need 1,000 sweat every time you enter, so that's yet another reason that sweat prices are going to be higher than usual in Ancient Greece and Next Island. Go to uh, Troy. Uh, there's 14 hours, it seems, limit on four people in the instance, so it seems at the moment. Uh, types of Moloch are Apprentice, Journeyman, Master. Again, I believe the smallest one is three or 4,000 HP. Biggest one is like 12,000 HP. Um, let's see here. So the quest to get in. You have to hunt 1,000 Great White Sharks, 2,000 Desert Crawlers, 5,000 Screechers. That's just what you've got to hunt to even gain instant, to gain access to the instance itself. Um, obviously, great white sharks, not going to be easy to hunt. I had one take me out in two hits the other day. I've got 230-something HP with my ring on, and with armor on, it literally took me in two bites. I wasn't trying to hunt it. I was just seeing kind of how my defense stacked up. They're very, very high level. Um, 2,000 desert crawlers, 5,000 screechers. Items you must keep safe. You will need to hand these in after you do that hunting mission in order to get access to Moloch Depths. Um, you will need 2,000 Danburite Crystal, 428 Citrine Crystal, 834 Perpite Crystal, 4,000 Animal Eye Oil, 500 Adrenal Oil, 200 Pancreas Oil. Reward is access to Moloch Depths. Thanks for Bonnie for items information. So big shout out to Bonnie for helping us out with that one. Um, so again, look at that list. What are they doing? Not only is there a reason to go do that if you can 
take care of the instance and, and take care of grinding away in there. But again, did you see that list of crystals? Crystals that previously had no purpose or very little purpose now have a purpose. Well, maybe you get through the hunt again, you still lack something. Are you really going to keep grinding it out? No, you're just going to buy it off auction at that point, right? You're almost three, 8,000 kills in. Whenever you complete that, 8,000 kills of stuff that's not super easy to kill, no matter what level you are. So yeah, you're probably just going to buy some of that off auction, right? So again, they've done a great, great job, great, amazing job at fixing the loot pool, making sure there's uses for stuff that did not have to have a use to have a use, and great job in making a type of instance where people want to farm. And because it's in ancient Greece, that's why you're saying that ancient Greek shares all of a sudden pay out. It's not that there are thousands and thousands of players in ancient Greece just running around doing stupid stuff, right? The reason the ancient Greek shares are paying out and starting to pay out fairly consistently is because of two things, the Moloch instance and the Gorgon instance. That is it. Those are the reasons that Ancient Greece is paying out. Now, I still think they screwed up by releasing the shares when they did. I think they screwed up by asking for as many shares to be sold as they originally did, even though they cut that number way back. Um, I still think it was a mistake to release the Ancient Greek shares when it did not yet have one crappy player, 59 ped, Moloch Master. Um, I do not think it was a good idea to make one Gorgon instance and add a few little missions that only a handful of players could do and go, oh, okay, we deserve $750,000. That's not how this game works. But if they keep going at the rate they're going and they keep doing the things they're doing and they keep staying in touch with the players, especially the high-level players who grind a lot, who cycle a lot, and they listen to what we tell them and they keep going in the right direction, then Next Island in Ancient Greece is most definitely going to be a top planet in this game you're going to see next island very potentially be up there with arcadia um planet arcadia for years was the other calypso quote unquote and all the other planets were kind of left to their own well luckily uh next island has made leaps and bounds tremendous leaps and bounds because of the team of virtual sense monria and now even Tulune have gone leaps and bounds in the right direction um, I am starting to see Cyrene kind of follow in those footsteps. I'm even going to Cyrene here in a couple of months to, to do a couple of things, to knock him out, to make a couple of videos there, because I know I don't get to cover Cyrene a lot. Um, Cyrene also has two new upgrades to the refurb heart fap. One gives you, I think, increased run speed. One gives you increased max HP, um, something like that. So I will be covering Cyrene slightly, but they, they still are a little bit behind the curve, I think, in a couple of respects, uh, a little bit ahead of the curve in a few respects. But if they will follow in Next Island's footsteps, Next Island has now taken the lead. And if Cyrene will start to fix their loot pool in a similar way, we're going to see a lot of planets in Entropia that have a lot of reasons to be there. And we're going to see a lot more people be drawn to this game. It's suddenly going to be a game that all your friends are going to want to play. It's suddenly going to be a game you're going to want to tell your friends about. I promise you that. We could potentially see this be the kind of thing that if all the Planet Partners get involved, takes us from a 10,000 average daily players game to a 150,000 daily average players game. Which would be great for the game. It would be great for the economy. It would just be great all the way around. And I think the word's going to get out because if all the Planet Partners start doing the right thing, if Cyrene falls in step and then Rocktropia, it, it's going to be very, very good just all the way around for the developers, for the Planet Partners, for everybody. Um, Rocktropia, I wish Never Die would get on it. I know he's had a lot going on. Um, I know there's a lot personally in this game that he's still emotionally attached to that you know, might not bring back the best of memories sometimes, but at least update it with Codex for us, man. <laughs> if if you would just go to the step of updating it with Codex or even putting on your website, you know, what you're doing as far as a version update, I would love to go do the Prison Chain mission on Rocktropy. That's always been a dream of mine. I really don't want to do it without Codex, though. Um, so, you know, I, I hope this will at least get Rocktropy involved in the mix again. And get Never Die to maybe, you know, log in and at least tell us what's going on and what we can expect. But Next Island really taking the lead in a lot of ways, especially where the loot pool is concerned. Especially where making instances and new items is concerned. So give them credit where credit is due. 
I've got to go, guys. Uh, I've got a lot of other stuff I've got to get done and obviously got to get back to Mayhem. So I will be back with more info for you guys, more content for you guys. Uh, continue to hit that bell button. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button because there's always a hater hitting the dislike button. And if you really want to help support us, head over to earnpad.com because when you earn, we earn. That's by far the best way you guys can help support us. We'll see you with more content later this week. Take care, Stevies.